It's a trap. It's an S trap. It's a trap. And yes, they are illegal. In this video, I'm gonna show you the difference in a P trap and an S trap and explain why the S trap is illegal. And if you've got them, you probably wanna get in touch with a plumber or see if you can install a P trap yourself. So if you have something like this under your sink, you're gonna to wanna to change it out as soon as possible. How soon? ASAP. So first of all, what are S-traps and what are they used for? Well, an S-trap was actually used just like a P-trap to keep the atmospheric pressure equal so that you don't get sewer gases back up into your house. And what that means is a lot of old sinks have a drain coming up right out of the bottom of the floor. They come up, they create an S, and what happens is supposedly the theory behind it, the water will come down, it will drain out here, and then from here to here, it will hold water in it. And that will keep the sewer gases from coming back up. Well, the problem is, the S actually creates a siphon. And what it does is it pulls that water down. The J bend on the bottom actually sucks down lower than it should and can dry out. Can I get you anything? Water would be nice. Now, a P trap is a little bit opposite. The water comes through and goes across and there's nothing here to suck it unless they install this wrong. And I'll talk more about that in a minute, how an S-trap can actually be installed where it works like a P-trap. So why wouldn't you want sewer gases leaking back into your house? Well, other than the fact that it's not gonna smell real good. Turn it off! To be honest, sewer gases are not good for you. They can actually be dangerous over long periods of time. So what they designed was a way that water could actually drain out, keep isolation with a trap there to hold water in it so you wouldn't get these gases back into your house. This is also why we have vents that go out the roof. That way that sewer gas, that, that gassy, nasty smell. Do you smell it? That smell, a kind of smelly smell. A smelly smell that smells can go out the roof, never come into your house, and that's why your house can smell good and clean. It's part of how plumbers protect the health of the nation each and every day. So why are they illegal? Well, when you install something like this, if this trap ever does get down low enough, you can get these dangerous gases in your house. And here's the thing, you can even get them with these if you don't do things right. We do have reports from the family that we had boiling in the toilet. Monday morning, she was gonna cook something, obviously we don't know exactly what, or exactly if she was turning the oven on or she was turning one of the burners on, but when she turned the oven on, the house exploded. Do you have a guest bathroom that maybe you never walk into, but when you finally do, you go in, you open the door, and it smells like sewer gas? There's one of three things it could probably be. The trap in your toilet could go dry and you can get sewer gases back up through there. But more than likely what it is, your lavatory, your bathroom sink, or your toilet, those traps have probably evaporated. Now, they are a smaller inch and a half trap, so you've only got a water level right here. And if nobody uses that over the course of a couple of weeks, a couple of months, whatever, this water can evaporate out up through the lavatory and you're gonna have a problem then. You're gonna have a dry trap. Keep it dry. Give it a try. If you've got traps like this, a P-trap under your lavatory, and these are more than likely what's under your tub, all you've gotta do is turn on that lavatory faucet, turn on the tub just a few seconds. All you're trying to do is fill this back up. Nine times out of 10, this will eliminate your sewer gas smell. <laughs> so where would you normally find an S-trap? Under your kitchen sink or under your bathroom sink, your lavatory. The reason being, in older houses, they roughed in the house where the drain came up right through the bottom of the cabinet, created the S-trap and went right up into the sink. Well, since they've started making the changes, now they stick that pop up in the wall and they have a sanitary T turnout and that's what attaches to the P-trap. So, if you're looking at buying an older house. We're not buying a sweater, we're buying a house. Make sure you look under the sinks to see, is there an S-trap or is there a P-trap? Can you hear that? Oh man. 
These babies are thin. Oh, okay. Is that supposed to come off? Hey, look, cool, Actually, yeah. carpenter ants. Now, we're gonna roll our trainer over where we can pour water into the lavatory and show you how it comes out with a P-trap, and then again, we'll show you how it comes out with an S-trap. And we're gonna do that so we can show you exactly how much water really does come out of it. So, let's change this up a little bit and show you what'll happen. So first of all, we've got a P-trap on here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of water in the sink, and really, I've only got two or three inches in there. I'm gonna set my bucket down here to catch it behind the trainer like we normally do. And then I'm just gonna let the water out. Now, what I've done here is what we do in lavatories every day. And if you look under the sink, you see that the water level is all the way to the top of the weir, holding water just like it should. That's exactly what a P-trap is supposed to do. So now I'm gonna put this bucket under it. I'm gonna take the P-trap apart. I'm gonna go ahead and get all the water of it. I'm gonna put the S-trap on. That way I can show you what it does next. And yes, this was put together wrong to begin with. You want your inlet piece here so your drain has a spot to go in, and when your nut tightens down, it holds it in there. This was inverted. I think we had played with it to see if it would do better holding with a deeper P-trap, but this is what they look like. This is the way it goes. We're gonna put it together here. Now we use the clear trap on here to show you exactly how much water stays in it. The other trap, as you remember, it stayed all the way up to the top of the trap. Let's see what this one does. Okay, so we've got water in the trap, we've got water in the sink. We're gonna let it go now, just like we did with the P-trap, and see how it does with the S-trap. So the water's now drained out. And if you get over here and look, the water should have held up to this level up here. It's down right here, actually to the bottom of the drain. So it let quite a bit of water out. Now the problem that you're gonna run into then is evaporation. You've got a lot less water in the trap and it's not gonna take near as long to evaporate. Now, a lot of problems is after this gets built up a lot, there's a lot thinner drainage area on the inside. When you do this, sometimes it will actually suck that P-trap completely dry. So you wanna be really careful if you have an S-trap and do everything that you can do to change it out and install a P-trap. So if you have sewer gases in your bathroom or your kitchen, you may wanna check and see what kind of trap you have. Do you have an S-trap or do you have what you're supposed to, a P-trap? If you don't have a P-trap, you have an S-trap, there's quite a bit of plumbing that may need to be done. You may need to install a vent pipe on the wall with a sanitary T coming out. It's where you can install a P-trap properly. At that point, you may end up needing to call a plumber. If you do, make sure you call a licensed plumber like me. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, helping you make more money in the trades.